When I make these wildlife videos, it's a lot of time sat on my own at the computer. So it's always great if I get an opportunity to meet up with a fellow wildlife enthusiast and do a little bit of a wildlife walk. So today, I'm with JP, who runs a channel, a channel on YouTube, where he goes around the country in his camper van, visits loads of wild places, and I'll put a link to his channel down below if you want to check that out. However, today we're at Cly Marshes on the North Norfolk coast. We're going to take a we're going to take a look around, and we're going to hopefully find lots of wildlife to show you. Let's go. Clay Marshes is almost bang in the middle of the North Norfolk coastline, and is in prime position for both resident and migrating wildlife. It was drizzling, but luckily it didn't take too long until we found our first bit of shelter. Well, we've just came into the first hive, and it's a brilliant start. Take a look at this. Well, it's all probably quite far away for you, but there's loads of stuff. There's avocet, pintail ducks, a godwit. There's a spoonbill in the distance. I can't wait to show you. Let's take a look. I've had some great days watching wildlife in North Norfolk, and I could already tell that this was going to be among the best of them. The spoonbill was an unexpected bonus, and although I didn't know it at the time, it was going to feature more than once on this walk. Until 2010, they had been absent as a UK breeding bird for more than 300 years. Then, a small colony formed along the Norfolk coastline and their numbers have been slowly growing and their populations spreading ever since. After a little preening with its spatula-shaped bill, this one was off. Closer into the hide, a couple of avocets were searching for something to eat. These two look to be almost out of their depth, but with almost every dip of their heads they seem to be stopping to swallow something, so they must have been quite successful. Nearby, another pair of birds were feeding in a slightly different style, by flapping their feet under the water and then upending their bodies to search for any disturbed crustaceans, invertebrates or vegetation. These are pintails, with a female on the left and a male on the right. Like pintails, northern shovelers are also sexually dimorphic, where males and females look different to one another. You'll have to watch one of my other videos to check that fact, as although there were both sexes in front of the hide, I seem to have only filmed the males. It wasn't all avocets, spoonbills and ducks in front of the hide. In the distance, a flock of small waders were hurrying about. These are Dunlin, and this is the real speed at which they were moving. Dunlin don't breed in Norfolk, but gather here in the winter as there is plenty of food for them. They are tiny, as you'll see compared to these lapwings, which were resting on a muddy scrape behind them. There was also a flock of black-tailed gobwits out on the pool. In this species, the females are larger and have longer bills than males, meaning they are less likely to compete for the same food. We could have stayed in that hide all day, but clay marshes is a large reserve and it was time for us to move on. Hopefully, there will be plenty more wildlife to see elsewhere. The wind had picked up a little bit, but as we were walking along a raised ridge towards the next hide, we had to stop to film as we had spotted the spoonbill again, and this time it was feeding. Spoonbills have extremely sensitive tips to their bills and feed by holding them open and swishing them through the water. When they sense prey, perhaps a small fish or other aquatic creature, they slam shut, gripping and then swallowing their meal whole. From here, I could also see a couple of male potchard. With their grey backs and deep red heads, they were beautiful and I wish I had got more footage of them. But I didn't, and instead carried on towards the next bit of shelter. We've just stopped in a little hide that looks over Arnold's Marsh, and there's loads of birds out there. Most of them are off in the distance, but 
Luckily, my camera is good enough to take a closer look. And the closer look we shall take. At the bottom of the screen here, with their black and white plumage and bright orange bills, are two oyster catchers. Despite their name, in the UK at least, their diet does not usually include oysters, with them instead mostly eating cockles, mussels and other shellfish. Nearer to the hide, a lone curlew was preening with its long curved bill. Alongside probing into sediment, their bills can do something quite cool, known as rancho kinesis. This means that the tip of their bills can move independently, so if they find a worm or other food item at the bottom of a hole, they can grab it without opening their full bill. After a short while, we moved on from the hide and carried on to where the reserve meets with the North Sea at a wide shingle beach. There were a couple of dead seals here, which although they were very impressive, they were also pretty gruesome, so I'm not going to show you them. As we made our way down a short track inland towards a windbreak, a marsh harrier flew by. A brief and shaky view of one, but don't worry, it won't be the last time I see one on this walk. At the windbreak, we realised some work had been recently carried out to maintain the pools, and this meant that the usual array of wetland birds had gone elsewhere. But all was not lost. Between us and the beach, a couple of smaller birds made an appearance. This one's a stone chat, and with its bright red and striking black markings, it's a male. I've found that they're quite an inquisitive bird, and will often pop up to figure you out, but they soon get bored and move on to more interesting things. And here's an empty post, which I filmed before realising the bird that was sat on top of it had scarpered. Ah, that's better. This is a meadow pipit, and it's the first time I've featured one in a video, which is amazing considering how common they are. Around 5 million of them live in the UK. One day soon, I will make a fact file all about them. We walked back to the shingle and started to carry on around the reserve, but didn't make it very far before stopping once again to film a large flock of Brent geese. These were exciting enough, but among their flock was a single member of a species that I have never seen before. Can you spot it? The odd one out with the red front and cheeks is a red-breasted goose. These breed in the Arctic and are a very rare visitor to the UK. Some years, none at all are seen here. They sometimes get caught up with other migrating geese and it's likely this one will leave soon when the Brent geese also depart back to their Siberian breeding grounds. It started to rain again, typically when we were the furthest from shelter we had been all day. So, we hurried along a raised embankment and then through a large reed bed before reaching Central Hyde, which is made up of three separate thatched roof huts. And guess what we saw from the first one? Yep, the spoonbill was here. This is the best view I've ever had of one, although I was stood at the back of the hide as lots of other people were sitting down also enjoying it. And here it is catching a small meal at one quarter of the speed. There were a few gobwit here as well, and I believe these are bar tail gobwits, slightly different from the black tail gobwits we saw earlier. If I'm correct in my identification, this is the species that holds the record for the longest uninterrupted migration, with one bird travelling 8,435 miles over 11 days without stopping for food or rest. On grassy areas around the pool, a lapwing with its plume of head feathers rested, whilst nearby a couple of widgeon waddled on by. Life might seem relaxed for these birds, but it isn't. They have to be constantly aware of predators, as one bird had learned the hard way. In the distance, 
a marsh harrier had caught a meal, which looks to be a widgeon who must have been caught off guard. Marsh harriers are one of the top predators of UK wetlands and will eat small birds, mammals, amphibians and reptiles. They are still rare in most parts of the country, but it is almost guaranteed that you will see at least one if you visit reserves around the Norfolk coastline. Although you have only seen 10 minutes or so of footage, this had actually been 6 hours of walking and wildlife watching, so JP and I headed to the visitor centre where I treated myself to a delicious cake and a coffee. And that is sadly where today's wildlife walk comes to an end. Make sure you go over and check out JP's channel. I'll put a link down in the description. Thanks, Thank JP. Thank you very much, mate. Thank you very much. Brilliant, and, and if you did enjoy this video, then you'll like this one on the screen now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you later.